Please give a warm line of applause to Stanislav Borisov. His topic is going to be the energy innovation ecosystem in Singapore. Stanislav, your line, please welcome. Give us your, your speech. Thank you very much for such a warm introduction, Eugene. And uh, I would like to also uh, say thank you to 4A2 Solutions for uh, this great opportunity uh, to share more about Ecolabs, to share about innovation ecosystem in Singapore and uh, how we are working with the startups and innovators uh, in this part of the world. So let me start my presentation uh, with a little bit of background to give you a context of uh, what Ecolabs Center of Innovation for Energy is. So first of all, uh, what Eugene briefly mentioned in the introduction is a joint initiative by three entities. So let me just introduce you each organization in a bit more details. So NTU, Nanyang Technological University of Singapore, is one of the biggest and leading uh, universities and research institutes uh, here in, uh, in Asia with over 45,000 uh, students and people working at the campus. So it's indeed uh, one of the leaders in the research here. Enterprise Singapore, it's a government agency uh, which is supporting uh, startups and SMEs and uh, the general development of the ecosystem from the government side. And of course, we have uh, CIS, uh, Sustainable Energy Association of Singapore, uh, which is a non-profit, non-government association uh, with a lot of uh, members uh, from this part of the world. So more specifically, uh, ECLABS is coming from Energy Research Institute. And as you can see on the picture, currently it's uh, the campus uh, where like, uh, you can see the scale. So basically, uh, Arian is one of the leading uh, research institutions here in the region with more than 250 million uh, in funding with more than 250 researchers, PhDs and brilliant minds working here. Uh, we also have state-of-the-art uh, infrastructure, test beds, facilities. Uh, we have a number of uh, research programs and quite a lot of industry collaborations. This is uh, in general Singaporean mindset so that any kind of research, any kind of activity should be uh, as much practical as possible. And more specifically talking about mission of Ecolabs uh, and our reason of being is to help uh, startups and SMEs to build their capabilities. So how we're doing that is by bringing together innovation capabilities and business capabilities. So by providing, again, uh, the necessary infrastructures, connection, uh, and business opportunities. So in my presentation later on, I will show you a few examples uh, how exactly we are doing this. When we're talking about energy industry in general, so nowadays energy is not a uh, very niche industry anymore. And we are focusing on uh, eight focus areas. Uh, to name a few, it's a renewable energy integration, it's circular economy, it's carbon reduction, it's uh, e-mobility and in general future mobility solutions, it's uh, energy efficiency, digital grids, IoT, big data, AI, uh, and of course, smart cities. So everything which is related to energy savings, sustainability, and clean tech technologies. I think it's not a surprise for you that the current trends in uh, digitalization, dig decentralization, and decarbonization is the major factors uh, in the industry development. And we are focusing again on all these aspects. So all our startups and partners usually come under one of these uh, focus areas. So Ecolabs is uh, an ecosystem. And uh, in this ecosystem, we have a number of uh, important players and group of players. So of course, we're still connected to the government, uh, which provides a great support in terms of the grants, innovation calls, and co-investments. Uh, we are still in very close relationship with Arian Energy Research Institute here at NTU, which also share a lot of uh, facilities, labs, and resources with us. Uh, and the three main probably players in this ecosystem, it's startups and SMEs, it's corporate partners and investors. So this is three pillars uh, on which our ecosystem can be rich and really helpful to all players. And of, of course, we're also partnering with a number of uh, uh, also industry players, uh, private companies for test bidding opportunities and for market entry uh, programs, a bit coming out of Singapore or coming in Singapore. So. Now I will dive a little bit deeper into the startups and SMEs, and uh, we'll show you a little bit more on how we're working uh, with the companies and innovators uh, here in Singapore. 
So first of all, Ecolabs is currently working with the around 70 uh, deep tech startups and SMEs. So some of them you can see on the screen, again, in line with the, our focus areas. And uh, what I mean by deep tech, and uh, also uh, some of you might be familiar with the technology readiness level uh, terminology, TRL. So if we look at this chart, uh, Ecolabs coming to play at uh, later TRL stages, usually seven, eight, and nine, uh, where the first uh, part of the development and maybe the first several years coming either from NTU itself or from other labs, be it in Singapore or overseas, then usually prototypes tested and deployed in the labs. And again, that's where our connection with Energy Research Institute comes to play because we can always leverage these resources and help startups to co-develop or like uh, existing products or new products. And But our focus areas and most of our partners with whom we are working it's at the later stage when the technology is ready to be commercialized and uh, deployed. So uh, speaking about way of collaborations and how we usually help startups, uh, we can classify it in three general buckets. The first is our, of course, core expertise is technology translation. And what do I mean by that is uh, translating technology from the lab into the market and how we do that can through product enhancements or co-development can be helping with IP filing, can be uh, standardization and the most important aspects of course where uh, we have quite a lot of uh, attention is field testing and deployment of products and solutions uh, on different sites be it here in Singapore or overseas and of course commercialization through a number of uh, commercial projects and co-innovation projects. Uh, but all of this usually uh, imp impossible or hard to do without proper funding. So for this, we also have a number of uh, ways to, to support uh, our startups and our partners. So the first level, of course, is government grants. Singapore is very supportive, uh, especially in regards to deep tech innovations and uh, new solutions. We have a number of calls, which is usually a partnership between government uh, of Singapore and the governments of other countries, or even just big uh, private entities. It can be co-innovation programs where Ecolabs might partner directly with a uh, commercial partner in order to uh, provide more opportunities for us for the partner itself to close some technological gap, as for the startups to help them to showcase and prove their technology in the real projects. And of course, a big part of the funding uh, is uh, VCs and angel investments. So we have a quite big pool of venture capitalists and I will show you later how funding also coming to play. And the last bucket, it's market entry. Uh, we're working uh, in both ways. We're helping companies who are ready to expand to Singapore and to Asia to come here in Singapore to establish a headquarter and later uh, expand further into Southeast Asia or Asia Pacific. Uh, but at the same time, of course, we're working with a number of uh, local innovators who'd like to enter new markets, be it uh, Europe, US, or any other geographies, even here in the region. So for this, we also have a number of uh, resources and instruments to help with that. Now I will go deeper into each of these parts. So I will start with the technology translation part and we'll show you how exactly we're doing that. So the first level, of course, it's the lab level when technology is either at the early stage or maybe it's a new product and you need to test it. So for this, we have what I mentioned before, state-of-the-art labs uh, for different uh, type of technologies. What you can see on the picture, it's fuel cells labs, it's a solar lab, it's batteries prototyping lab, it's wind and marine lab. So we have 12 labs uh, like this uh, covering different uh, domains. And uh, one of probably our most advanced and um, interesting developments, it's a uh, mobi future mobility lab. So for the future mobility lab, we have also a number of vehicles, a number of technologies, both tested as within Energy Research Institute, as in collaboration with our startups and in collaboration with our corporate partners. So you can see some BMW electric vehicles there. You can see collaboration with Volvo uh, autonomous bus, uh, which is full scale 12 meter uh, autonomous vehicle, which is tested here in Singapore. Of course, we have a smaller vehicles, be it utility vehicle for uh, carrying some weight or like even road sweepers and we have minibuses. So all these technologies, they're constantly uh, in testing, of course, coming from the lab uh, later, uh, they're coming through the test bed. So the second stage, 
as soon as the technology is ready to to face, uh, let's say, the, the real world, or at least uh, some part of it, uh, we have a number of testbed partners. So some of these testbeds coming from uh, NTU or from the government, and this is like multi-million projects, each of them, uh, just to give a few examples, Renewable Energy Integra Integration Demonstrator, in short, REITs. Uh, it's uh, it's inst several microgrids installed on the island here, nearby Singapore, where a number of renewable uh, energy integration solutions can be tested. Uh, again, in collaboration with industry partners and uh, startups and research entities. So we have Citron. It's also uh, the first and the official place for testing all autonomous vehicles. So any autonomous vehicle which uh, is planning to hit the road should go to a number of certification to get uh, all approvals first in this uh, simulation track, in this test bed, before it can be allowed uh, further on the dedicated roads in Singapore. We have experimental power grid center, uh, which is also a multi-million uh, facility with a number of equipment and testing facilities which, where you can test a number of solutions and uh, again, uh, show or demonstrate uh, how it works. Even the campus of the university of NTU itself is a living lab. Uh, what it means is that uh, university management set up uh, specific uh, goals in order to reduce energy consumption, water consumption, how to, to recycle waste and so on and so forth. And for this purpose, we're deploying different tech on the campus itself and uh, looking uh, how is it helping to achieve these uh, targets in real life. Uh, just to give you a flavor of one of these test beds, what I mentioned earlier, Renewable Energy Integration Demonstrator, REITs. So I have uh, my colleague, Prasanna, who will present you uh, in a short uh, video, in five minute video, what this test bed is all about. So let's uh, see the video from Prasanna. Gravity, light, heavy. We are all very familiar with the basic laws of physics because we experience them in our day-to-day -day life. How about power system? Let's assume this is the utility grid. Utility grid has its own inertia. This is called power system inertia and it's very important to maintain the power quality and stability. In a conversion system, the power flows from top to bottom. Our homes are here. We are familiar with 400 volts, but the distribution network has two more levels, 6.6 kV and 20 kV. Anything above is transmission. We only focus on this because all the major changes are happening here. Currently, the percentage of renewable energy distributed in the network is extremely low because of which the stability of the grid is not shaken yet. It's been a smooth sailing for the conventional grid, but not for long. The waves are coming. Drastic changes in the renewable energy market will have an impact on the grid business. Also, the advancements in other technology domains are forcing the grid to evolve and to upgrade. The distribution network is changing. Some consumers, they are taking new roles as prosumer. There are new loads such as electric vehicles and battery integration. Of course, there are energy service providers. Let's imagine we bring a small power system into picture. What will happen when the power starts flowing into the system? What will happen to the grid stability? In order to explore the next-gen distribution grid solutions, we designed and developed a comprehensive modular power system architecture. This is REIT's low-voltage microgrid cluster testbed. The green ones belong to NTU, the red ones belong to the industrial partners. We have 400 volt and 6.6 kV medium voltage network. Two sets of shared assets, one common load feeder and a comprehensive interoperability framework to make sure we can manage the modular power systems. All these power systems are also digitally connected and the backbone is compatible with the standard communication protocols. REACH testbed has been deployed on Semacore landfill. Let's have a look at the core infrastructure. The LV and ME switchgear are designed to provide high degree of reconfigurability to offer different DES integration such as grid scale energy storage and electric vehicle batteries and photovoltaic systems. The future of distribution grid 
would demand different expertise to work together as a team in a single project. For an example, if one of the REITs operator wants to do some R&D use case but he lacks some components, he goes to the core infrastructure and gets the cluster access to implement the use case. In this, the characters represent the microgrid operators. Let's go for one particular use case. The REITs industrial partners share the technical expertise to create a strong business model and as well as to implement the challenging use cases of next-gen grid solutions. For example, power energy management, microgrid control and optimization. The test board is designed to accommodate different types of grid solutions. As a result, today we are working with various industrial partners focusing on different research concepts. What is the impact of REACH to Singapore? By offering four unique types of collaboration, REACH has been attracting industrial partners from different spectrum of energy sector. As of today, in REACH consortium, we have about 33 industrial partners from all over the world. What is our vision? To explore the innovative solutions for the future grids and to contribute to the new generation of standards and products and to close the gap between research and commercial. REIT's platform offers strategic research collaborations between industries and academia. This reconfigurable test board provides pre-competitive r and opportunities in the energy sector specific to the future of distribution grids. REITs bridges the gap between conventional and modern grid. If you are part of this ecosystem, we are on the same boat, literally. This island is an ideal destination for research ideas and grid solutions to be cast away in a good way. I am Prasanna from REACH team and thank you very much for your time. Okay, uh, thank you Prasanna for such an entertaining and interactive video. Uh, this was one of the examples of uh, our test beds, uh, but of course uh, there are many more examples and opportunities coming not only from Energy Research Institute or from uh, the government of Singapore or our uh, partners. We have also a lot of uh, industrial partners. We have uh, uh, corporates and private companies who own uh, different facilities, be it in Singapore or overseas, uh, which we are also uh, partnering and uh, using as testbed, which actually gives uh, a good exposure both as for the owner of the facility and uh, also maybe uh, we can help them to achieve certain targets in terms of sustainability or energy consumption. But at the same time, uh, we're helping startups to deploy and showcase uh, their technology uh, on these testbeds. Uh, it also works as a launchpad to new markets. Uh, because as you can see, not all of these test beds are located in Singapore. So this is another way how we can help uh, a startup or a company to expand overseas. So uh, again, talking about technology translation, uh, we talked about labs, we talked about uh, test beds, and of course the most important part comes at the commercialization stage. Uh, and for this, we have a fairly big and diverse uh, ecosystem and network of partners who are working with us on different levels uh, from research to some uh, already prototyping to deployment, be it their own solution or solutions developed together either with Arian, with Ecolabs. So with a number of these partners, we're working much deeper on uh, specific core innovation programs addressing their specific needs. And for these programs, we usually invite all startups to apply. And I will show you later how uh, specifically it works. Uh, now coming to the second bucket of funding support. So we talked about technology translation. Now when we're talking about funding, uh, there are also multiple avenues uh, which startups can explore. Starting from the first level where uh, a startup can apply for POC or POV, POV uh, startup SG Tech grant here in Singapore. Uh, usually these grants are available for development of the first uh, product uh, for the company. It means that the company not necessarily might have uh, a revenue stream yet. Uh, and these grants uh, come handy. Eclabs bring also together infrastructure and other opportunities to help with the product development. 
Uh, the second phase is uh, different innovation calls. Again, it can be in partnership between two governments, in Singapore and another country, or between a government and some uh, big uh, corporate partner. So one of the recent examples is Eureka Global Stars uh, Singapore call, uh, where through this grant, uh, companies can apply from one of the 14 uh, Eureka partners countries in Europe, uh, including Ukraine, and a company from Singapore. So these two companies coming together in order to develop a new product or solution, which at the end of this project should be commercially ready. And both governments covering the cost of such development and testing and prototyping. So each country has their own requirements and different amounts that can be covered under this grant. But uh, this is one of the examples how uh, companies can uh, find support, uh, even if they're considering market expansion. And of course, the most important part, which is uh, interesting probably to the most number of uh, our uh, startups and SMEs, is the network of angels and the venture capitalists. It can be pri private VCs, it can be co corporate ventures. So uh, we have a strong pool of investors who, uh, who are working closely with us as a technical expert. So from our side, we are providing them with a high quality uh, startups, deals, and in, in the return, of course, investors, they, uh, they're also interested to, to invest in the right startups because energy field in general and deep tech startups is not something that can be understood easily by everyone. And that's also our role to work closely with uh, both uh, partners from a startup side and from investor side to make sure that there is the right match and the right expectations regarding this uh, specific technology and how this investment uh, will be carried out later on. So an, another interesting way of uh, get some funding support at the first place, but also to get into some projects with the uh, with corporate partners, it's uh, co innovation programs where Ecolabs uh, creates an agreement with the partner, uh, usually corporate partner, uh, over a specific problem statement. So for the corporate partner, it's usually a great opportunity to to find uh, potential solutions which might either maybe disrupt the business in the future or maybe they're already facing this challenge right now. And uh, for a startup, it's also a great opportunity to, to be introduced to uh, these corporate partners, showcase their solution. And if they're shortlisted, usually there is a, uh, some amount of money, like let's say 100K, 200K, 300K uh, dollars, which uh, invested as a grant. Uh, also, a club's coming to play uh, into these programs as a in-kind support, which also might include uh, providing the infrastructure, talent, and so on and so forth. So there is a clear interest and benefit for all parties, for corporate partners and uh, for startups. Uh, now I will show you uh, one of the examples of such uh, co-innovation programs, just to give you a bit more insight in terms of uh, how is it structured, how it's organized, and uh, how it might look like for startups. My colleague, Ryan, who is leading uh, Smart Cities and Future Mobility Initiatives here at Ecolabs, uh, will present this video for you. So let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm Ryan of the Ecolab Center of Innovation for Energy. I lead the effort in Smart Cities and Future Mobility at Ecolab, and I'm going to share with you a co-innovation program between Ecolab and Continental Automotive Singapore. CoPace, with very strong presence in Israel, is the startup hub of Continental. CoPace is made up of three building blocks, information, cooperation, and investment. The team we are working with is the Continental Venture Arms. The Ecolabs Continental Urban Mobility Accelerator Program, or ECOMA, is jointly established by Ecolabs Center of Innovation for Energy and Continental Opportunity Singapore. It aims to build a pipeline of products and services that are co created by startup, SME, and our industrial partners, Continental. The ECOMA program is not just about us. It's also about you and your success in building your startup to the next level. The ECOMA program is for any future mobility startup who are ready to set up base in Singapore and venture to work. When you join the ECOMA program, we will take on an active role to support you in your innovation journey. Some of our support include up to 125,000 Singapore dollar worth of project funding and startup support, access to our global network of partners fundraising assistance through investment pitching and grant application support, guidance and mentorship from technical and business experts and seasoned entrepreneurs. 
training and workshop to hone your skills in critical aspect to accelerate your innovation journey. Join the Ikuma program is as simple as one, two, three. First, submit your application in the Ikuma program website. Next, actively participate in our community, including network events, capability building workshop, trainings and pitching sessions. When opportunity arises, we will facilitate collaborative discussion between you and interested partners. Lastly, and more importantly, once selected, be committed in the deployment of our project in one of our global testing sites to validate your technology performance and suitability for scaling up. The ECOMA program is designed to offer high flexibility which sets it apart from the rest. We accept applications throughout the year and offer a wide array of capability building and networking opportunities, both virtually and physically. After your application is accepted, you'll be given an introduction to the Ecolab Center of Innovation for Energy. We also invite you to attend our events, workshop, trainings, and community events. If you are shortlisted for the program, we will invite you to showcase and present your solution to a tailored audience, including potential investors, clients, and partners interested in your solution. The Ecoma program is championed by the four of us. Aravin and myself from Ecolabs, David and Wilson from Continental. As a champion for the Ecoma program, we pride ourselves on the success of your innovation journey. And the standard is always to excel in whatever you choose to do. Applying for Ecoma program will not be difficult. Before application, you will first need to be a registered company that focuses on urban mobility. You should also have your pitch deck ready as part of the application process. During the applications, you will be required to fill out the application form and attach your pitch deck. Your application will then be reviewed and we will notify you should further information be required. We may also request a meeting with you if you need more information. And that's all for you. For the time being, the Continental, Copace and Business Unit team will review your applications and if you are selected, You'll be invited to an info day, which will help you make an informed decision about our offer to you. Upon offer acceptance, you'll have the opportunity to pilot your solution at one of our global test rate sites. We will be assessing your application based on this criteria. The startup team, the impact of your products and services, your company business model, the technology feasibility, and the relevancy and alignment to continental business requirements. Some of the specific application areas we are looking for include autonomous, telematics, electric, intelligent traffic, and area mobility. So, are you ready to embark on your innovation journey with us? The application is open now. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ryan, for presentation of Ecolabs Continental Urban Mobility Accelerator Program. So that was uh, another example of uh, how we work with our corporate partners and what kind of programs uh, we can structure. Now let's go uh, further. Uh, we talked about technology translation. We talked about funding, co-innovation programs. So, and of course, another part is the market entry programs. Uh, what I mentioned earlier is that uh, we are building a network of our partners, especially from overseas, uh, who are interested and ready to, to work together on the exchange of technologies, innovations, and maybe work on some projects together so that uh, when startups come to us with the internship, it's always easier to help uh, startups when you have strong partners uh, in these markets. So currently, we have around 15 uh, market entry partners at Ecolabs, uh, and this network is growing uh, faster even despite uh, the current situation. Uh, on the other uh, side, uh, when companies expanding to Singapore, of course, we have uh, an office space. Uh, but uh, since quite a number of startups uh, already working with us and uh, in the same office, we decided to uh, to build our own co-working space in order to put everyone not just in the same building because we have uh, around six floors but also uh, in the same floor so that everyone uh, is around each other 
So this uh, co-working space is currently uh, under construction. Uh, again, due to the COVID, we had to uh, postpone uh, the launch of this co-working space, but uh, uh, I'm pretty sure it will be launched uh, end of this year, beginning of next year. And uh, of course, uh, some feedback from startups and SMEs who worked with us across uh, different programs uh, with different requirements and different uh, needs. So just to summarize what uh, been, we've covered earlier is that Eclabs uh, helping startups with technology translation, uh, with funding and with uh, market entry opportunities. So now let's see how companies usually become a partner with Eclabs especially uh, startups and SMEs. So we start with an introduction call just to understand uh, what this company is about, what's their interest, and whether there is even a synergy between us. Later on, we go into the stage of due diligence when we are doing a technical DD on a company to understand better their expertise, their uh, innovation angle, how the technology is different. So all this process help us later on when a startup has a specific need, let's say uh, they're looking for funding or they're looking for specific projects, we understand much better uh, how to position this company in front of the clients, in front of the investors. So again, it's a win-win situation. And as soon as we've completed uh, technical DD on the company and we understand uh, very well all the strengths and maybe gaps uh, or technological gaps or other gaps in the company, uh, we proceed to the collaboration area confirmation on which of these areas that we identified during DD, we would like to work together, which later of course leads to, to some uh, collaboration agreement or service agreement where we define the scope and the immediate action points where we can track uh, how we are uh, progressing along the defined uh, lines. And uh, now proceeding to the second part of my presentation, uh, I would like also briefly cover also how we're working with corporate partners. So you've seen in the first part, how we work with startups and SMEs. So now I would like to, to zoom in a little bit in the uh, our way of collaboration with corporate partners. Here it's a bit more uh, flexible and also depends a lot on the specific needs, specific requirements of the corporate partner. But I will just show you maybe a few examples also how it uh, might come together. Uh, again, in general, uh, very broad strokes how we collaborate with corporate partners. It can be on co-innovation uh, programs, it can be joint lab or participating in uh, different consortiums. On co-innovation side, of course, it's open innovation. Uh, we can help with technology roadmapping, help to identify and close the gaps, uh, find the right uh, technology provider and tech sourcing, as well as with DD process. Uh, of course, like later on when we go into the project, Eclabs also provide in-kind support. For the joint labs, again, it's pretty straightforward. So there are different opportunities to, to create a joint lab uh, here in Singapore with the support of Ecolabs, Energy Research Institute, or NTU. So this, again, all uh, very much discussable. And consortium, it's uh, participating in the joint projects, again, joining forces. Uh, how is it happening in Singapore that for big uh, projects or calls, uh, there is, of course, usually a lead player who, who decide to participate in it, but uh, the application has a much better chances when uh, fewer smaller companies, startups and SMEs join uh, this consortium in order also to provide an innovative angle to, to this project. So with this, Eclabs also play a role to help to identify the right technologies, the right partners uh, for such consortiums. In some cases, Eclabs or Energy Research Institute can even be a lead partner in certain projects, but mostly we, we are helping to, to find the right innovators for such uh, consortiums. Just to briefly touch on open innovation model. So on the one side, we have a problem owner who comes with the problem statement, usually it's uh, our corporate partner, and then Eclabs helping uh, to find uh, technology providers, problem solvers, uh, help to translate it into commercial project, because again, our interest is not just to find, to source the startup, is to, to find the way how to do a project all together. Uh, and of course, market enablers and uh, trans uh, all this facility for translation, test bedding, this is also coming to play. And we always can leverage the existing infrastructure or our partnership uh, network. Again, and the end goal of any open innovation model, at least in our case, is some real concrete projects. So again, some typical funnel uh, 
when we are doing the long listing, short listing of uh, startups for specific projects. So of course we do a very broad scouting, not limited only to Singapore. We're doing it on a global scale, leveraging again our uh, market partners, leveraging our partners in other countries to help to, to create this pipeline of uh, solutions, which later on, of course, will be shortlisted, uh, due diligence will be done. So again, uh, it can come as from Ecolab side, as uh, from the corporate side, quite often we do it uh, together. And at the latest stages, we're identifying some uh, scope of projects that uh, shortlisted startups and corporate partner uh, will be doing together with the in-kind support from Ecolabs. So on due diligence side, uh, it can be like very simple, a very uh, simple due diligence if the corporate partner wants to, to do the heavy lifting themselves. But again, usually it comes uh, from both sides where Ecolabs also helping to, to identify uh, some product details, product advantages, roadmaps to understand uh, in which stage is this current technology, how is it positioned compared to competitors uh, so that it's much more uh, meaningful discussion. Uh, some examples of joint labs, uh, and you can see some of the big names, uh, some of them international, some are quite well known uh, here in Singapore. So uh, these are examples of joint labs. Uh, but uh, again, the, the very interesting consortium model on which we've been working quite actively, especially over the last uh, year or so, is uh, again, consortiums where a corporate partner coming as a lead for, for the consortium with the commercial part of the project and a club's join uh, as a tech provider or with the tech support from the innovation side. And again, in Singapore, there are multiple schemes and uh, ways how to how government supports innovators so that uh, some of these costs can be either offset for the project or even compensated for the final client. So there is a strong interest in doing uh, such uh, consortiums together with the innovators like Eclabs. And at the same time, corporate partner doesn't need to deal with the individual uh, companies if they don't want to, or of course there can be a direct uh, collaboration if uh, there is an interest. Again, just uh, briefly summarize uh, our collaboration model is uh, co-innovation opportunities, joint labs, and uh, consortiums. Thank you for your attention uh, of today's presentation, and I'm ready to take any questions if you have.